Now more than ever, it's time for America to return to its biblical foundation. Join us in Pensacola, Florida for the first stop on the 2023 Flashpoint Live Truth and Freedom Tour. New year, new city, and two days of powerful flash talks make this a next level event that you do not want to miss. Visit us online at govictory.com slash Live. Space is limited. Register today. You were there in the room, and uh, we, we had some uh, good discussions there about what's coming this year. Yes, indeed, Gene. I was there in the conference room. By the way, you have a very nice office. I borrowed your office I know you there. did for hours. Call. Hours. I was working away at your desk. Probably more work than usually goes on. <laughs> Probably. That's all I can say. <laughs> Probably. And, and, anyway, but I'll tell you what. Pensacola is going to be powerful, and one of the reasons it is is because we're moving from a um, kind of an entertainment to a mobilizing format, which means that it's always great to have the Flashpoint Army. We have great conferences and great events. But this is a, this is a mobilization event, which means it's going to have the real feel of the grassroots army getting equipped and doing its work. So I'm yeah. especially excited about it. Yeah, amen. It's, it's going to be that. Let me bring in Tony Suarez. Tony, you're there. Uh, for one of the night sessions, I believe, and we're excited you're coming. What are you seeing happening next week in Pensacola? Well, it, it's it's going to fit the 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 title of the tour. We're gonna we're gonna fulfill the words of Jesus that the true worshiper worships in spirit and truth. So we're going to equip you, and then there's going to be impartation activation in the evening. Um, I, I just yesterday we saw over a thousand people baptized in the Holy Spirit, healed, delivered, and saved. Just yesterday in Columbus and in San Diego. I And and that was wonderful. But I'm telling you, I'm more excited for what God's about to do in Pensacola because I believe that what happens there is literally going to touch all four corners of this country. So if you haven't already made your decision to come, this, this is the confirmation. You need to be there or be as close to that room That's as right. you possibly can. Yeah. But in case you were sleeping under a rock and you didn't know what happened, uh, the balloon wars happened. We were invaded by a balloon. Watch. An urgent search is underway off the South Carolina coast. Navy and Coast Guard vessels on the scene hunting for what's left of the Chinese spy balloon shot down by an American fighter jet. In rough conditions today, Navy divers searching in shallow water, an area spanning seven miles. The FBI is expected to take custody of any elements recovered. We now know it was a single Sidewinder missile fired from an F-22 that hit the balloon. It's giant surveillance bay, the size of three buses detaching, then plummeting into the ocean at least 60,000 feet below. This image showing the fighter jet. It eventually reached an altitude of about 58,000 feet as it tracked the balloon and fired. A U.S. senior official saying they had been monitoring the balloon for a week and they took immediate steps to prevent its collection of intelligence. The balloon making its way across the continental U.S., crossing out to sea over the Carolinas. China claiming the balloon was a civilian aircraft condemning the U.S. action and saying the country retains the right to respond. And for the. All right. The, OK. So there, there was a lot of good comments in there and that little report there. They took immediate steps. However, it had crossed the entirety of the mainland of the United States until it made its way into South Carolina. Let me bring in uh, General Flynn because, I, General Flynn, welcome back to the program. I wanted to get your Thank take you, on this, sir. Uh, you know, most Americans are sitting at home listening to this with their mouths open. And say, How in the world could we let something go across the entire United States and then decide to shoot it down when it finally crosses over into the uh, into the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Are we missing something? Yeah, I mean, I think for a lot of people, you know, there was a lot of Americans over the past week that made a big joke out of this. Actually, there were so many memes flying around on the Internet, but this is not a joke. It is a very serious uh, breach uh, of, of our sovereignty. Uh, just some of the things that this balloon probably was collecting was signals intelligence, meaning they're listening and monitoring different things or uh, their mapping of, uh, of distinct bases. And they, were, they flew over the top of and, and very close to in proximity to many of our of our most secure bases. Right. So they're mapping those bases and they're doing all sorts of other intelligence collection activities while they're flying over the uh, over the United States. You know, they and, and you can see you're showing the track now. Yeah, 
I mean, you know, so so this is a breach of our sovereignty. And and I think it's an embarrassment, actually. I mean, I really feel I feel terrible for our military because our you know, the, the military makes decisions based on our political leaders in our country. And that's and that's rightly so. And it should be that way. And so, you know, one of the one of the commanders, NORAD, you know, the the uh, the, the the command that takes care of all of our of our the, basically protects the sovereignty of the United States of America. When I heard him talk this week, it sounded like he was confused over what we call rules of engagement and that he didn't feel like he had the right uh, measures to be able to 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 respond to uh, this this essentially this overflight of our country by by a uh, you know by a by China in this case and they knew exactly what this was they knew exactly the dimensions of it and when exactly what it was doing but there was confusion and so you know I I joked earlier this week with a, another friend about how we track Santa Claus you know going around the the country on Christmas Eve and. And uh, and yet we we had problems, you know, figuring out exactly what to do with this thing. So all in all, I I feel terrible for our military uh, because our military has the full capability to respond to something like this. And there was no threat of debris landing when you're talking about knowing exactly where this thing could could uh, end up landing, where they could have shot it down before it even entered U.S. airspace or certainly when it first entered U.S. airspace up in the north and uh, northwest. But I think all in all, uh, it it shows uh, a capability that we might lack. Uh, That's the other potential that the Chinese were looking for. And those are just some of the things that they test. It's probing. You're probing, probing, probing. You probe your enemy's lines until you find their greatest weaknesses. And uh, if the Chinese learned anything, they learned a few of our potential weaknesses between our military decision makers and our political leaders. And frankly, let's just let's just uh, pray that that uh, that we don't have the, the significant weaknesses that I that I think that they observed this week, and maybe maybe we have been able to fix those weaknesses uh, here, here in the last 24 to 48 hours. If not, then uh, then we're in a much more serious trouble in our military than I I can even imagine. Uh, so true. Let me bring you in, Lance. You know, Lance, this thing was first uh, came into the public spotlight by a civilian who saw it uh, there in Montana, I believe I have my facts right. And was, right. and that's, then it kind of exploded into the news and went viral, so to speak. Uh, let me show you this, these uh, uh, charts um, from the Trafalgar group of a poll. Uh, spy balloon action. Do you believe President Biden should have taken quicker action to shoot down the Chinese spy balloon before it even entered the sovereign U.S. sovereign airspace? A whopping 58.8% believe yes, absolutely. No, 31, not sure, 9.8. I don't understand how that number should be so much higher. But anyway, let me show you perception of the U.S., Uh, How do you believe the handling of the Chinese spy balloon has impacted perceptions of America on the world stage? Now, that's what you need to understand. This goes to uh, what uh, General Flynn was alluding alluding to. It made America look weak, 59.2 percent. And I think regardless of what uh, Lance, regardless of whatever they uh, intel they were able to get and send back, that's one thing. But what General Flynn was speaking to the, the amount of time it took us to react, you know, we took immediate action after it crossed over into the Atlantic. Uh, you know, this is a bit bizarre. What do you, you know, from your perspective, Lance, on the world stage, what does this do for America? Well, look, Senator Ted Cruz says something really interesting, Gene. He said the only reason the government even acknowledged there was a spy balloon there was because the civilian citizen media brought it to their brought it to everyone's attention not meaning that they didn't know it was there meaning that it's very likely the biden administration would have let the balloon go all the way through and keep it a secret and file a private protest uh through blinken that this is highly inappropriate and irregular and that china would write back oh it's just a weather balloon got off course we don't they'd all be playing this stupid game of mutual uh courtesy and the only reason we know about it is is when the uh, the citizens grab hold of it. So there's a key. The citizens have to blow the whistle on the incompetence and irresponsibility of government. Secondly, there's a second spy balloon everybody acknowledged over South America. So they're not being blown off course by accident. They're being they're being um, driven. They're they're literally programmed to go on a specific flight path 
to get information. And they're basically in a spiritual world, if you want to make it the big proto-spiritual uh, angle, China is flexing its spirit muscles and saying to the world, we go where we want and do what we want. We are now the prevailing global ascendant power and America is on decline and they will embarrass us in front of the world stage. And you know what? Let's go take a lesson from that. uh, I think we should be taking the threat of China far more seriously and we should probably be repenting for uh, where we are because evidently, God is sending a message to America that you, that without him, we are vulnerable. And as, and as Lance did, and you guys talk so, so wonderfully about, you know, the spiritual aspect of all of this. I mean, I, you know, I could throw in the satanic abortion rituals that we're now seeing in New Mexico and Texas. I mean, there's, there's so many things that are happening. What I don't want the American people to be, and especially I'm, I'm very, I'm going to be paying, I'm going to watch this whole thing. Uh, I, I don't want the American people to be distracted by things that aren't important to America. Bingo. I want the, yeah. I want the American people to be tuned into what is happening to us in our lives. And I don't want people to worry about things that they cannot control because those things that they cannot control, trust me, somebody else is in control and God is in control. But take control of what you can, meaning in your community, with your families, in your churches. You know, that's where people can take charge of their very lives and don't worry or complain about all these problems that we're having elsewhere. So pay very close attention and make sure that we have the right people. We have to make sure that we stay, you know, we're, we, we need to be, as Americans, dedicated to our election systems and processes, not just show up when we feel like showing up. I mean, there's so many distractions in our lives today, and I want people to reflect again, back in on what is what is true and pure in this country. And what is tr- true and pure in this country are the freedoms that we have, the ability to practice our faith the way we want to practice it, and, the, and the, uh, our ability to raise our children the way we want to raise our children. That's what's true, and that's what's pure, and that's what people need to worry about more. And so that's one of the first things we do is we need to take authority over fear. First of all, some trust in uh, horses, some trust in chariots. But watch this. We will trust in the name of the Lord our God. Pastor Gene, I have been very much uh, getting um, a lot of tech messages and things coming my way since this Chinese balloon. Because for several months, the Lord kept saying, watch the skies, watch the skies, watch the skies. There's going to be something unusual that's going to happen that men are going to say, what is this? Then on uh, January 22nd of this year, the Spirit of God said there would be an explosion. There would be fire and smoke in the air. And they would say in the air, what is this? And then there would be an intensity of of the soil would greatly shake and it would go to a whole nother level. And then a few days later, you know, we, we see this earthquake in Turkey. And God said that these things would begin to happen as signs. Watch this now, that God is walking among the earth and he is going to show this earth that he is in charge, not China. Not Russia, not Biden. God is in charge. And because of that, listen to me. If the Holy Spirit, you know, many of the end time uh, eschatology teachers will tell you about the Antichrist and they will teach about the Holy Spirit. But, you know, the scripture says that even the Holy Spirit is the restrainer of the very Antichrist. If the Holy Spirit can restrain that, and do you think that he cannot restrain China? from attacking us and and all the other things that right now that we're discussing, of course he can. Because there's something that we have to pay attention to. And it's this, the glory of God is touching this planet and the earth is going crazy because it doesn't understand what is going on. This earth is being absolutely touched by the glory of God. You say, well, Pastor Hank, why is that so uh, interesting? When the glory of God comes, listen, things get exposed. When the glory of God comes, there's great change, the Mount of Transfiguration. When the glory of God comes, there's turmoil, even among the nations. You saw that with Israel and you saw the pursuit of an attempted war of Egypt and Pharaoh 
Pharaoh against the nation. But what did God do? The glory was the restraining force as the Lord sent a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. And I'm here to tell you, God was not lying when he put a slogan on the mouth of Donald Trump and his whole campaign. And he prophesied it way before they even said the slogan. Here's what it is before we go to the break. God said, I will make America great again. He has not changed his mind. That is where we're heading. And you watch the restraining force of the Holy Spirit, who is still in this earth, is going to deal with every one of our enemies. But this is the story I have not heard much about. Uh, all right. Before the event, Sam Smith posts, this is going to be special Grammys. And he shows a rehearsal picture. But look below it. You can't find this tweet now because they deleted it. CBS. CBS post. You can say that again. We are ready to worship. Lance. Wow. We are ready to worship. You know what? Okay, so here's my take on this, Gene. That was brought to you, by the way. Did you see the sponsorship oh, for this? Yet. If you got it, go. The 60th I rest my case. We just showed you on this program a few days ago. The same thing brought to you by Pfizer. Uh, go ahead, Lance. I'll it's, let you finish. It's, it's there's times when the devil is my wife says it's so Ron obvious. That's like a Ron obvious. It is what's interesting is the devil isn't isn't bothering to hide. He's out coming out. And this was done on purpose. This wasn't like a celebration of Satan as much as it was a deliberate offense to religion, which is why they the you know, CBS would use the worship, you know, uh, word. This was done, if you read it, what um, Petra, I think her, his name is, the guy who's dressed like a girl, who says, says he's a woman. I personally grew up wondering about religion and wanted to be part of it, but then slowly realized it just didn't want to be part of me. So because Christianity wasn't affirming to his desire to be a woman, uh, he decided and Sam decided they were going to poke at religion. This was done to troll us, to get us. So Same vibes. There's the same red from Joe Biden's speech and, uh, and the same thing from Benny Johnson calls it out. This is, the, Lance is right, Pastor Hank. They are not hiding behind anything that's yeah. blatant. It's well, in your face. And this is what we're is. dealing with. I don't know why, Pastor Gene, they call it the Grammys. Because if my Grammy was alive, she would whoop my bottom for even thinking about watching such nonsense. Yeah. And so what they're trying to do is see how much we will, we will buy into their deception, their agenda. They want to see how far they can go and how much they can get away with it. And I want to follow up on something that Tony Soros said. I want to speak to the Christians out there. I want to speak to the pastors. I want to speak to those uh, decent Americans, those who have a moral conscience. Why in the world would you want to turn on the TV and watch such nonsense. The fact that the Christians had no conscience and, 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 and tune in on that and increase their ratings doesn't help the cause any. But here's the thing. I think what's even more interesting is Jesus said these words. He said, uh, what did you come out to see? Uh, a, a reed bending in the wind. And that's exactly what they're trying to do. The devil, like Lance said, he's not hiding it anymore. He's being blatant. And the problem is too many of Christians and pastors and different moral, decent people, so we thought, are bending, like Jesus said, in the very direction of their nonsense. And I think we've got to start taking a stand and saying, you're not going to do this on our airwaves. You're not going to do this to our children. Amen. Well, I, I do want to encourage you, you know, that the enemy is a spirit of darkness he really doesn't want you to know that he's operating. He he lurks in the shadows. So if he has to come out, it's his last tactic. And that's what we're seeing right now. He knows the end is near. And this last tactic of coming out of the shadows, this is all about intimidation. But we're going to resist the devil and he must flee. Father, I pray for everyone watching today especially parents. I pray that an anointing would come upon mothers and fathers to be mothers and fathers, that the anointing yes. of a previous generation that would look 
at what was in their children's room and what they're watching on television, what they're reading would come upon us as well, that we would go through iPhones and iPads and laptops, that we would delete and block apps that are gateways into demonic realms, that we would have a, a discerning spirit uh, to, to know how the enemy is trying to infiltrate the lives of our families. I pray that an anointing and a passion would come upon parents to pray over their homes, over their children's bedrooms, and that our families would fulfill the word of the Lord that says, as for me and my house, we shall, That's right. not if, not maybe, not That's hopefully, Lord. but we shall serve the Lord. And so I pray that an anointing of boldness would come upon every single one of us to resist. The enemy has come in like a flood, but the Lord is raising up a standard and every work of Satan will fall to the ground. It will be for naught. And we declare we're not going to victory. We're in victory in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.